Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today, we're doing another installment of the weekly meta breakdown where we look at the top performing decks on the MTG Arena ladder. This particular video is gonna be for the timeless best of three format. We'll cover best of one, historic, and the other formats. Probably gonna hold off on standard for the next little bit. I'll see if there's anything like super innovative, but honestly, like I was looking before this video and it's pretty much been the exact same card for card decks that we've covered in past weeks. So might just hold off we're going to start getting bloomboro spoilers and kind of go from there uh, but we will look at timeless we're getting the data from untapped gg companion tool that runs alongside arena's client aggregates users win rates including your own gives us a bunch of cool stats that you could track your games the link is in the video description for untapped if you're interested in uh, using the service and then we will post all the deck lists i'll timestamp them so you could just lift and shift whatever decks you are interested in um, so we are going to start uh, looking at popularity today, just like in terms of metagame distribution. And then we will look at the deck list themselves in terms of win rates. I'm going to kind of group like decks this one. So it won't be like sequential necessarily like win rate, win rate, win rate. Um, there's a couple different like it's dual decks, black based cards versus energy. Uh, so I'm going to group kind of the energy decks, the different variations together. Then we'll look at some of the black based decks and then some of the more uh, kind of unique in the sense of like isolated uh, archetypes on their own um so popularity of the day platinum to mythic uh just because a lot of reset so there's not as many people in the higher category yet uh so boros energy 20 percent scam mono black eight percent show and tell about eight percent and then we have a four color elemental 7.3 mirror control rakdos scam around five so it's pretty uh, like all things the distribution's not too bad if you actually look at historic uh boros energy makes up 50 percent of the meta I, like i was playing both best of one and best of three last night i was just playing best of one like on my ipad while watching tv and i played like seven boros mirrors in a row uh, so there's a lot more kind of sun cleanser main boarding that's happening as well so interesting to see kind of where the format kind of splits with that if we're looking at kind of the distribution, Boros Energy had a big increase where we're seeing like the scam decks kind of normalize. Uh, we won't cover here, but Elemental seems like it's dropped like the four color money piles. Uh, pretty poor showing like 49%, all things considered. So Diamond and Mythic rank, we have 6,300 matches that'll be played. We put a cap at 20 games just to try to get a broader amount of games. As always with these, because the population is fairly small, Focus less on necessarily like the win rate. Like it's a lot of times people can have very high win rates on their own when it goes to like that sample. Like even if we look here, um, like I'm 26 and three with the historic version. So it's possible to get like a 90% win rate um, with some of these decks when you're doing like a little bit smaller, but it's more just kind of us to see what configurations, what people are trying and what's working versus what's not working. So the first Boros Energy deck, uh, this is Luris. So we're going to make that distinction between Luris and non-Luris versions with Blage. Uh, and this one here has got a couple interesting cards. You see Ruby Collector, which was a card that I played a bit in Convoke. This was really good in Convoke. Uh, it does have some utility in this deck here. It's a mana sink late game. If you attack with three or more, you get a Mox Ruby. You're not using it like in Convoke where you can sack the Ruby. And you usually can just go wide. Like this one, you have Ocelot's Pride to go wide. You have this, the Guide of Souls. This one also has Nurturing Pixie, which kind of resets some of your effects. So you can pick up your Amp Raptor, you do it again. You can pick up your Static Prison, your Amulet, your Johnny. So it's got some utility in that regard. Uh, so a lot leaner curve with this particular one. Still see the full four Ragavan in here. It is a bit softer to Bowmaster, this particular configuration given that you have now 10 or even potentially more uh, in terms of like one toughness creatures, even more with like the Amp Raptor. So interesting to kind of see that configuration, seeing the Aether Hubs in the mana base, the Sunbake Canyon, Utility Land, Vantage, or Dun in here, you have your Vantages, Elegant Parlor can also be fetched in that respect. This version is playing 21 Lions. Uh, deafening silence for any sort of storm effects uh, also could be reasonable against things like show and tell needle for activated ability along with flute static prison is more removal swords is removal vexing bobble for like cheating mana and then containment priest for any of the kind of like reanimate style decks 
So we've had that variation. We go to this one, which is a Flage version of the deck. 71%, 100 games, so a little bit larger sample size. This is a Gingantha Companion version. So by going bigger, you have access to Flage. Very, very powerful card. Uh, just Lightning Helix on ETB and then on attack. Recursive, uh, playing that like Uro style role. Single copy of Fable. Uh, a lot of kind of overlap in the, the one drops here. Not as many in terms of like Ruby Collector or the Pixie. Still your Regaman, still your Pride, still your Guide to Souls. Uh, and then the kind of locked in two drop package. Monumental Henge for some card advantage in this particular version as well. You have the Legendaries and Flage, as well as Johnny and Amulet and Regavan that can all be hit by it. Again, a lot of the overlap here. This one gets you access to Blood Moon for the greedier mana based decks. You'll notice three planes, so just uh, fetch proactively for that in that case. And then we go to Mardu Energy. This one's at 73%. So with Mardu, you get access. There's a couple of different like variants. Some of them will sometimes play the Soren in here. This one's opting for Juggernaut Peddler is kind of a Thoughtsy style effect, your Bowmasters, and a single copy of Chithulian Nightmare that just gets you kind of recursive value. This one's also on three Goblin Bombardment, so a way to kind of throw your creatures. Bombardment's really good in the mirror, provided you can get established. In Historic, I'm playing two copies. It's a card you always like want one in play. Uh, in the mirror but once you start getting like duplicate copies provide no additional value uh, so it is one thing to kind of consider there mana base just allows you to pretty easy splash the black here a lot of the same cards we see another uh nightmare for the grindier matchups and then juggernaut peddler as well for hand hate then we go to demir control so the kind of mistman control if we would decks They've adapted and added Tamiyo Inquisitive Student. Uh, fairly easy to flip in most of these decks. Actually, with this one here, what are you drawing? With Brainstorm. Yeah. yeah. Duh, Brainstorm's legal here. I was playing this in the Jeskai Historic version and I got the ultimate off. I drew like 25 cards or like 20, 25 cards. I was just like, what do I do with all this? Uh, but just basically answers for days. You have your mana drains. Bowmasters is predominantly your win condition in this deck. Uh, so these the games do go long. If we look, 8.3 is the average win time. You loop like, loop, like commit to memory, uh, but you're winning with Bowmasters, you're winning with Luris, you're winning with your opponent uh, going in and conceding. Seeing Path to Peril as a, an answer main. We've seen some Toxic Deluge also in the main in some versions, but with all these Luris decks, these energy decks, they're going pretty wide, so having access to a Sweeper main does have some utility. Um, and then we have like Blood Chief's Thirst as removal, Stone of Erich for sack stuff, just hand hate, activated abilities, kind of all mixed, just answers for every kind of situation. We then have, they're calling it Demir Control as well. I would classify it probably as Demir Midrange, if I were to say, just 16 creatures is quite a bit. Oh, sorry, forgot to, forgot to take off show missing cards. Someone mentioned that. Um, but here you have like nether goy for curse of creature that could come back full set of tamios here you have psychic frog that can provide some utility so you can like pitch the nether goy and then get it back after bow masters so just a lot more dense in terms of creatures themselves uh, but still so a lot of the same control elements mana drains drown in the locks brainstorms bunch of removal sink into stupor is a land that can also be a spell Got some lorians and then treasure cruise with this particular version uh, sideboard again, so Fluster Storm against like Storm decks, Blood Chief's Thirst, Surgical, it's just a, a, a melody of different effects. Meat Hook is pretty good against these uh, different energy decks. There's a lot of X ones, so even just for one, gaining you life can be very useful in that type of matchup. We then have four color show and tell. So this one is at 81%. So we have kind of a new innovation, a new element to the deck with shifting woodland sorry it keeps defaulting to show missing pop that on all right uh so the woodland here basically for delirium you have seven or more cards in your library you can copy the omniscience so this provides some utility if you're getting heavily discarded in terms of like say grief or stuff like that or uh, yeah grief so it gives you some value there it gives you kind of an alternative you're seeing this version here playing tainted indulgence for card advantage a little risky into a bowmaster meta just drawing extra cards 
which is usually illegal in this format. Uh, this Planar Genesis is another kind of interesting card where it's that growth spiral effect. So look at the top four cards. You put a line from among them to play. If you don't, uh, put a card from among them into your hand, put the rest of the bottom of your library. So early it can help you ramp, late it's basically like an, an anticipate that gets around Bowmaster's draw. You're still using the Mastermind package to, to combo off. Uh, so you're able, you have Mystic Sanctuary to get it back if needed, and then you're winning with like Approach the Second Sun. So usually Mastermind, uh, Approach, and then just find any of your kind of dig effects. Assemble the team, Planar Genesis, Tainted Indulgence, all ways to draw cards in the deck. Sideboard, you got the full set of Ley Lines for Heavy Discard, bunch of removal options, Gross and Gip for the Mirror, Veil for Protection, Thoughtseize, and Fatal Push as relevant. Moving on, we go to Jeskai Control Energy. So this is kind of a mock-up based off the modern version. So the modern version is playing Counterspell. There's Mana Drain in this format, but a lot of kind of cheap effects, Brainstorms, Galvanic Discharge. The modern version plays Consigned to Memory, the Stifle and Counter Colorless. There's not really like a Tron deck in this format, so it's not as relevant, um, but just a bunch of cheap interaction. Wrath the Skies as removal, Solitude as a win condition. Modern version usually plays the Fairy 3 as well, um, but you're winning with like Plages, Wondering, Solitudes in this deck. Sideboard, just like removal options, Graveyard Hate. Rest in Peace is an interesting one given that your a Flage deck is your primary win condition. I would probably say going something other than that Wrath. It does get hit by Wrath the Skies as well, so something to consider. So I guess. Your opponent's like all in graveyard it could be relevant um but this one seems a little suspect when your main win condition relies on the graveyard uh just counters removal fairy for like the control mirrors uh subtlety fury chandra for heavy control like against the control managing kind of mirrors slap down a chandra just try to win that way there go to sultai mid so we have our first sighting of grief here 67 percent so this one here, you got your scam package, you have uh, both Malakir Rebirth and Reanimate, Tamios, so it's got elements of the blue-black control deck, but you also have access to like Abrupt Decay as a flexible removal spell, Witherbloom Command, uh, just a lot of utility here, provide some pseudo card advantage with the mill, uh, kind of dig you into Uros, destroy target non-creature, non-land, non so hate pieces, stuff like that. Removal, 3-1, and then target opponent, like, kind of drain. So it could just even be, like, you know, kill a Bowmaster, uh, gain and drain type effect. Rolls in here, cruise. The life gain could be relevant as well since you're reanimating at times. Uh, Fluster Storm, again, just kind of cheap interaction spells. Sudden Edict uh, can be used against just another Edict-style effect. Harvester of Misery can be brought in against the go-wide decks. Endurance for, like, graveyard mirrors. Force of Vigor for, like, show-and-tell and stuff. You then go to Mono Black Scam. So we're seeing this version is like we are playing Necro till the sun comes home. So Necropotence and Necrodominance, uh, both in the deck itself. So really just trying to get that Necro as early as possible. Uh, you can pitch all the extra copies to March of Wretched Sorrow. You have your Trolls, you have your Griefs, Shieldreds, all relevant um, in terms of like reanimation threats. You also have Emperor of Bones which is another way you can animate uh, or reanimate the various effects. So now, notably, they do get haste and they can attack that turn, but they get sacrificed at the end, or exiled. Oh, no, just sacrifice. So you can kind of redo it over and over with multiple copies. Um, I was doing this in Historic with the new Ulamog because it counts itself in exile, so you just get a 17-17 uh, Annihilator 10 with haste, which is kind of sweet. Uh, the deck's playing Spymaster Vault in here, a couple of fetches, and Phyrexian Tower. Uh, so only 13 lines, which is kind of aggressive in the deck itself. Sideboard, extractions, flutes for activated abilities, feed the swarm, all the bowmasters in the side, which is pretty interesting. So it's going heavy on the necro in the main. Uh, graveyard trespasser, so it kind of shifts into just more mid-range if they're bringing in like heavy counter spells, or if you're against more of an aggressive deck, necro for combo decks. We go Rakdos Burn, so a deck that was doing fairly well earlier in the format, but with all the incidental life gain with like Boros Energy, we see the Slick Shots in the main, a Croxa, Searing Blood in here. Some of the versions have also shifted into like Amped Raptor, uh, kind of lowering the curve, but you, you can't really afford to play the Spectacle stuff because 
it's a bad flip in terms of it. Um, but nothing too Modern Horizon-y here. Um, so this is just another take of the burn deck. Uh, just various kind of effects of the side hand hate extraction. This one's more Rakdos than some of the versions we've seen, where that's been basically just light splashes for like Bowmaster's Bump of the Night. Uh, this one's got a lot of utility of sideboard cards being black. And then lastly, we have four color Belcher. Uh, really, it's mo like Golgari Belcher. So, how this works is Char Belcher, you activate it, you Flip your deck over because you have no lands in your deck, given that everything's module DFC. We got a lot of new uh, dual lands or flip MDFC lands in the recent set. So this here, you're able to use things like the Cycle of Freilies that could come into play on tap. Uh, you have the Fell of Profane, which is removal, which has got utility, Graveyard Hate with like Bogger, Trawler. So you can at times play a fair game. Main board ley line protects you against discard, stuff like that. Uh, you do have the ability to just channel on turn two and belcher out as a win condition. Otherwise, you kind of leverage things like the ley line in play. You can do any of these cheap artifacts. So you could beseech the mirror to fetch Iron Craig feet. And then if you have belcher in hand, you win the game that way there as well. Fact of negation for every counter spell decks. Uh, basically, just you're an all in combo deck. Uh, there's not really a kind of pivot out of it. Haywire Might for Hate Pieces, Calling Ritual for Go Wide Decks, Assassin's Trophy for Hate Pieces, Thought Seizes, and Needles as relevant. So things like Flute, Needle, Karn, you just want ways to be able to kill. That's it for the week. Let me know what you've been playing, how you've been finding the format. Curious as I've been more on a historic kick recently. I uh, hope you enjoy, and as always, if you can, like, comment, subscribe, helps out the channel, and it's free. Thanks for watching.